Hi guys, so today we're going to be trying nail art templates. So I saw these on TikTok, of course. This isn't necessarily a new concept. In fact, I've made my own little templates before, but I thought that these were so fun because they have so many designs all pre-made for you in a nice little laminated sheet. You know, if you don't wanna do it yourself, these are so cute. So I wanted to grab some of those and do some hopefully very easy nail art today. I've always struggled when I've made my own because I usually put like a piece of plastic over my phone or something. I'm not sure if I've ever printed anything out in laminated it that way, which I assume is much easier. We'll find that out today. It's been a couple weeks since I ordered these and they did take a while to come in because they are from the UK and I have the perfect things to try this with because after I did my video on the Nails by Dev liners, she sent me so many fun things and she specifically sent a bunch of colors and gels and stuff like that that are perfect for Halloween. It may not look Halloween-y today, but I'm feeling it inside. First is this Nails from the Crypt collection and I've already been using these. I've had them for a little while now. And then all of these little goodies, I'll do a little quick haul. Honestly, probably one of the things I was most excited about when I opened this package are these nail liner brushes. Nails by Dev does some of the absolute best nail art I've ever seen. And so I can only imagine that these brushes are top tier. So I am so excited and so grateful she sent me these. Just look at that. I love, I'm so excited. I will absolutely be using probably all of her brushes today because she didn't just send me these. She also sent these ones. So this is a ombre brush, a liner and a baby blender brush. So I feel like I have everything I need to do some nail art. Actually one more, another little shader brush. And then look at this. She did little mystery coffins for Halloween. And honestly, I was just impressed with the box also because it's such a nice box, like all lined and everything. So she sent me some clear trippy gel and then a couple of these glob gels. One is green, one is clear, and the green one glows in the dark. Some bling gel, some glow powder and glitter. Love the packaging, that looks so pretty under this light, doesn't it? Some Halloween charms. So we have some like hands, some spiders, some spider webs. <laughs> You guys know how I feel spiders. I feel like it's gotten worse. So I feel like I can almost not even say it. If you watch all of my videos, you're probably sick of me talking about them. I can't even actually say the word spider most of the time. I only do it here because you guys wouldn't know what I'm talking about. In my house, we call them spooky scaries because I can't actually say the word. I feel like if I say the word, it like summons them. I know that's not true, but that's what my brain's telling me. Anyway, she also sent me this finger, which I was like, oh, okay, that's cool like a practice finger, I'll use that. But I saw a video she put up the other day that this finger has fingerprints. So if you wanted to do, I guess like crime scene type fingerprints on some nails, you can use this instead of your actual finger because you don't want to be dipping your actual finger in gel. And I think that's just so cool. I don't know if my other practice hands have fingerprints. I suppose that's never something I've looked for in a practice hand or practice fingers, but I'll have to check that. Also, this one does bend. We've got some more glow pigments. I'll insert how they look in the dark right now because I assume that these are all different colors. And then these little skinny sanding bands and a mandrel bit to go with it. I've been loving these little mini sanding bands so I cannot have enough of these. And then some more trippy gel, which this one over here is clear. So I wonder what color this one is. Let's find out. Ooh, okay, this is white. And the trippy gel is like a moldable gel, kind of like a clay. And then when I say perfect for Halloween, all of these gel shades she sent. So lots of orange, a gray, which I'm super excited to have because I don't know if I have like a really good just gray. Most of the time I feel like I have everything, but I'll go to look for something and I'm like, how do I not have that? Like I don't have a gray. Okay, you know what? Looking over there, I do have a gray, but <laughs> it's definitely a different tone. That one's way darker quick sidetrack. I ran into this the other day when I made some teeny tiny press-ons for my friend. Hold on, let me grab them. Let me show you. So I made these for my friend who's going to be in a wedding and she's a healthcare worker, so she never has any nails on. She's also a very outdoorsy person, so she never even does her nails in the meantime. So uh, I made her some nails and making tiny nails like this, these super 
short nails was so hard honestly doing that long nails is so much easier but we decided on like a light pink and because these are press-ons, I wanted it pretty much completely opaque. And when I was looking for a gel to use, I could not find a completely opaque, like light nude pink. I just don't have one. Like one that's more on like the cool toned, you know, like lighter dusty pink. I don't have one. And I was like, how do I not have this? That is crazy. So I had to really build up the color with a Korean syrup gel that I had to do like three or four coats of. Anyway, I was super happy she sent all of these perfect Halloween colors because again, they're just not ones that I have a ton of, especially the oranges. I'm glad this October I have a good amount of orange I can actually use now. And I love this green. I'm gonna swatch this one in a moment because I really love it. And then in my last video, a lot of you were asking what was on my other hand in the first half of the video. And it was this cat's eye gel. And I didn't know the, like the number of it off the top of my head when I was trying to respond to comments, but it is 104. Another thing I was super excited to open was this shading gel. So it's like a jelly black for shading and like light outlines and stuff like that. I am so excited for this. And then also a matte and shiny top coat. So with all of this, I'm gonna absolutely do some Halloween nails today. I do know that I ordered at least one Halloween sheet for the nail art. And I want to just swatch two of these really quick. I really want to swatch this green. This one is Zombay. This one's just calling to me, like I must see it. <gasps> is it a jelly? I love. And then I want to swatch this cat's eye just cause I'm obsessed with cat's eye right now. Okay, this one looks a little bit more like it's pretty on its own, but I want to put it over something so that we can really see the cat eye effect. So let's just put it over this jelly. Why not? This jelly is beautiful too. It's such a unique color because it's green, but it's almost like blue. I love it. There we go. We'll really be able to see the cat's eye, cat eyeing. Okay, I have to do what you guys just saw because under this light, you can never see it. Oh, you can kind of see it here. It is so bright in person. Like the reflect on it is like crazy, but just these lights, they do not allow for reflective things. So now let's look at the sheets that I got. And these must be pretty big. I mean, like that's pretty big. How much were these? Okay, it looks like I spent a total of like $40 including tax and shipping was free. Ooh, okay, let's see. This first one I think is just like a kind of like random some stuff. So first we got some zodiac signs, just some like makeup stuff, butterflies, emojis. We got a little bit of a, you know, creepy crawly things going on. Some like little filigree, some hearts. This is more just like a random one. And then you do get a spot if you want to try it freehand. And then I got a character basics one. So all kinds of mouths, eyes. These look okay sizes too. Some of these seem a little bit big to me, like just, you know, in terms of like my nail, like that definitely would be a little too big. Same with like the faces and stuff. But if you're like doing like half on one nail, half on another, and these again are practice ones. So freehand, you'd be doing them smaller, but you can also, of course, like they show, do it on here, peel it off and put it on your nail that way. But this being like a practice sheet, I do get that they are a little bit bigger. And then we got a letters and numbers one, which I'm super excited about. I think almost every time I've tried to do this sort of method where I put like some saran wrap over my phone, I'm always trying to do some letters or something like that. So I'm super excited to have these. These are good sizes too, I think. Like you could do like a one big initial or you can do a little bit smaller. Lots of numbers in the fonts too as well. I love this one. This one will get a lot of use from me. And then our first Halloween one, we got this. This has all the classic horror movie characters. We got Boo over here, some skeletons, some just, you know, like outlines, little Happy Halloween, some checkerboard. That's cool stitches. And you know, just some like random things. I love it. I might wanna try one of these today. We'll see. Characters are not my forte. Did I buy two of these? Oh, you know what? Uh, I bought two of the Halloween one because I needed like a couple more dollars for free shipping. And I think it was like the price of one of these. So 
I got two. I'm really excited to try it. These are super good too. And then we have spooky letters. And you know, of course you can make your own. I know that they have like self laminating sheets where you don't even need to put it through like a heat press or anything like that. But for all of us who don't want to save a bunch of different little icons, find them, draw them. I wonder if these are hand drawn or if they're just like random ones that they found. I love that there's also little tips on the bottom. So now that we've gone over all of that, let's get into doing a set. I do need to take these nails off really quick though so that we can have like a nice clean slate to start with. And I'm going to leave the face cam here so that I can like hunch over like a gremlin while I'm doing all of this. So <laughs> let's get into it. So as you guys can see, we're going to do acrylic today. Figured that would be fun. I haven't done acrylic in a while. So I'm gonna use this acrylic from Secret Nail Affair. It is a glow acrylic and it glows like a bright blue color. So this is going to be my base and then I'm going to ombre it into kind of like a clear glitter something. I haven't entirely decided what I'm gonna put on the end, but I do know I want this to like cover my natural nail. I also am using their brush is a number 12 and their monomer the other day they dm'd me because they wanted to let me know that their monomer is actually hema free they heard me talking about the hema free stuff in my video and they wanted to tell me that their monomer is hema free which i think is super cool i've been using it and i like it because it does not smell that bad it still does smell like monomer but it doesn't smell at my whole house you know what I mean? Definitely makes the room smell, but it doesn't make like my whole house smell, which is nice. And it works good, but I thought that was cool. I did not know that. I don't think a lot of monomers are HEMA free. I don't think that's a super common thing. So I thought that was cool that they told me because I didn't know. Also, this acrylic is so pretty. I love all the little hollow sparkles in it. I do have a couple other of their glow ones. They're like kind of in the same color range, but I like this one because it has sparkles. So I'm pretty much just going to ombre this down a bit for each one and leave the end part clear. So I have my base down. Look at how pretty that sparkle is. Oh, I love it. So I've gone ahead and grabbed two spooky acrylics from Nita's Nails Galore. We looked at these last year or the years before, I don't remember, but there's two different vibes we can go with. So vibe number one, is more of like a scary horror movie type of set, hence the hand. Or we could do a more classic Halloween type color set. I think that there's also, is this a little bat? It is. There's little bats in here. I'm having a really hard time deciding between going scary and like traditional Halloween. I know I do have like a sparkly pink on the base, but I feel like either way it will work. I think I need to take a look at the sheet again and see what I'm wanting to do because I think that's going to decide what acrylic we go with. I really love this ghost. It's like more of like a vintagey looking ghost, but I also really like the scream mask. I like that it's at an angle, it puts like straight on like you usually see it. 
I do like the face though, especially since this will glow. That would be so fun to have like a face there. Okay, I decided. I think we're gonna go with more of a traditional Halloween type color set. So this one it is. I am going to do a pretty thin layer here at the end because this is chunky glitter. So we will have to sort of clear cap it at the end. And we already have a ombre going on. So I don't want to bulk it up too much. Okay, like that. I think that's cute. I'm gonna try to do my best on the pinky, but these glitters are definitely wider than the nail itself. So I might need to put some like selective glitter on there. See if I can grab some like small ones. Okay, I have a serious question for you guys. Why did no one tell me how crooked this nail is? Like what happened? When did this happen? And how do I fix this? Do I chop it off and start fresh? I don't know. Do I try to file it at the end end up being a bit of a shorter nail usually it's these nails that are crooked but i tried really hard this time and look they're all straight but of course this one i must have knocked it on the side or something and didn't notice uh okay i'm gonna clear cap these and then i'll fix the thumb for the clear i'm using young nails speed clear because it really does set up fairly quickly which is what i like I also do hold my brush until the bead gets like shiny and smooth and that also makes it set up a lot quicker which I like because it makes me not do it too too chunky since I can't like spread it super far and it also makes it a lot less messy. You know what? This should actually be a fairly light filing day because I managed to do these not too terribly thick. Very exciting and I will also fix this really quick. Okay, so don't mind all of this. I went into gremlin mode to do the nail art and I went to go re-watch some tutorials just to make sure I do it right and I get any little tips and tricks that they had beforehand and anything they ever had about their stencils, videos, Etsy listing is all gone. So, what I would assume, I'm purely speculating, is that they probably got hit with copyright for some of these designs because, like I was saying, I don't know if they drew these themselves, if they took pictures and outlined them. I don't know. If you're like wanting to do copyrighted pictures and characters and you personally like print out a stencil and make it for yourself, that's not really a problem. No one's going to say anything about that. But when you start selling things with those characters or images are on that that's when it can be a problem so i'm assuming that's probably what happened that being said i'm still going to use these because i'm sure if you do not feel like making your own you can find other stencils out there so that was a little hiccup that i was not expecting but regardless we're going to continue on and let's get on with actually doing this now we are filed and ready to go nice and smooth hopefully have a nice good base to lay these little decals on no more crooked thumb. So I'm going to start with this little ghost. I think this one is so cute. The lines are very thin. So there are two ways you can do it. First off, you can line 
say all the black and then put the color on the back or if you I guess you wanted to look more dimensional you could fill in everything and then do all of the details afterwards which of course that way you're not really going to be able to see where the details are that you need to do I guess that's fine if you're just wanting like the outline and then you want to put like your own custom details on top so you can do it either way I think whatever you want is totally fine I am going to do all of the black details and outlines and everything first and then put color on the back that way it's like a nice flat sticker looking type decal using the baddest black by nails by dev and the dream liner in nine millimeter so first I want to do the eyes it definitely is a little hard to see but of course the gel has its own shine to it that's definitely different from this like lamination so at a different angle I can definitely see it I'm gonna be just like flash curing these in between just in case I mess up I can like wipe it no big deal Okay, eyes down. All right, let's try these super thin lines. Again, I feel like it is quite hard to see if you did get your line down when you're doing the outline. I think for that reason, if I were to make my own, whenever I printed it, I would turn the opacity down. So that way when you put a black line down, it's not camouflaging in the picture and you can see where you have and have not placed your gel like a lot easier. That way you don't have to be like looking around at all angles to see what's shiny or at different levels and what's not. I feel like everything is going really nicely with these brushes too. Like they go to a perfect Point. Sometimes with nail art brushes, I'll get them and even when they're new, they'll have like one extra long hair or something like that that just messes me up and I have to cut it myself. But these are like perfectly to a point and they hold the gel really well. Like it's not all sinking down super quickly, but I am able to like get enough for a full line. I don't have to go back and like re-dip. One thing I do remember from the tutorials they did have up when I saw them was I do remember them putting some sort of clear gel down and I do not remember if that was before or after because you could definitely do a base coat if you wanted I don't think it's necessary I guess we'll see how well it sticks together maybe if you're, maybe if you're doing like really thin thin decals you don't want it to like break and you want to give it that extra strength but I feel like I would personally want mine as thin as possible to be able to mold down easily. Did I already do that line? I think I did. See, this is where I'm like, dang, going over places I already did. I do feel like I'm getting the hang of it. Definitely easier and quicker than if I was gonna try to freehand this. All right, just a couple teeny tiny little touch-ups. There we go. All right, I feel like I'm happy with that outline. Then I'm gonna add my white on top. I'm using my white F gel. Now I'm going to just paint over this entire thing. My white. All right, that looks pretty. <gasps> oh no. Oh no. I just saw my mic was not on. I'm so sorry. <sighs> I'm gonna pop it in my lamp for a full cure. All right, let's see how easily it pops off. Well, this is kind of hard, huh? Okay, I see why maybe they would do like a base or a top on this now because I don't want to like scrape these edges. All right, I'm going to put a super thin layer of base over and I'm going to go over a little bit just so whenever I try to scrape this up, it's not scraping the edge of this. Okay, cure again. Okay, let's try now. There we go. You guys ready for the moment of truth? Ta-da! It looks pretty good. Definitely some lighter parts of the outline that I am going to need to go over a little bit, but overall it's super cute and it is still pretty malleable. I'll just take a sec to cut off extra base coat. Cute! Okay, one down. I don't know how many more to go. Next, let's do a bat might be a little difficult because I want to only just outline the bat and then fill it in with another color. I think that looks good. Not that you guys can probably see it. <laughs> then I want to fill in with this color. This is recently deceased. This is from the nails from the Crypt collection. I think I filled in it all. All right, let's see. I got just actually a sharper pair of tweezers to see if I can just like lift an edge. 
All right, not amazing. Some of the liner definitely did not come off. You absolutely need to do the base coat, I think, otherwise everything is not promised to stick together. It's kind of hard to see on the black that if you need to do a second coat or not, but you know, I will still use this one. We'll just touch it up afterwards once it's on my actual nail. Then I wanna do a face. I think I'm gonna do this one and I'm not gonna use any lines, I think, for this. I think I'm just going to use this orange gel in Trick or Treat. I'm definitely doing a second coat on this cause I can absolutely see that I did not get everywhere evenly. That was definitely a bit harder to do with a thinner gel. Much easier with the liner gels for sure. Filling in an outline with the regular gel is fine, but just like keeping those edges in is really hard. Then I'm going to put uh, again a small layer because I want it to all stay together. I don't want to put each little piece on individually. Okay, let's get it all. Actually alcohol first. There we go. Okay, we have these three. How many more should I do? Because I figure, put this one on the thumb. I think that'll be cute since the pink glows. Figure this one here and then like the bat like there. Probably a couple more. Okay, so I have all of my decals. I feel like they look really cute. One thing I will say is you cannot do them too, too thin because they will rip. So make sure you are putting like a top coat or like a thick base coat or something over and definitely around what you've actually drawn on. That way you can start lifting up from there. It could have just be me, but I just was having such a hard time lifting them up. So let's attach these now. So for me, these are definitely not just going to stick like as a sticker, they need something to hold them down on, but I would worry that things aren't going to cure like a ton underneath the gel already. So I'm going to put a base coat on and I'm going to mostly cure it and then stick the decal on and then finish curing it. None of this gel is super thick, so hopefully that will just like finish it up. All right, a little bit cured. I feel like it's a little hard to get everything to stick down nicely, but it does stick. You just kind of have to be like good with holding it down. All right, it's mostly laying flat, so that's good. Let's do the others. Let's do this big ghosty now because I feel like that one might be kind of hard to get to stick, but after that, everything else should be a lot easier. Oh yeah, this one's definitely gonna be a lot harder to get to stick. Okay, I mostly got it down. I really just took these tweezers and I held it like this, and then I tried to do only one side. So I would like just put a flash cure lamp on this side and try to hold it down and then kind of slowly roll over and cure everything down and for the most part I think I only have like a couple tiny spots that are lifting like there. I do feel like I can mostly push them down though maybe I'll be able to get them like flatter but if not I can always fill in with gel and then I got a little bit of like a crease right here because of the roundness of the nail but that's okay. This one should be easy because it is pretty thin, but I am pretty much just going to do the same method, kind of just like hold down on one side. One of these bats is definitely better than the other. I was planning on doing two of them, but now it's kind of looking like it might be better to just do one. 
Hmm. Also, I feel like it doesn't really fit. Just want to snip this piece off. Since I've only been doing one on each nail, I don't know which one to do now. A little candy or the candy corn? Hmm. I think I'm gonna go with the candy because I don't have any green on this yet, even though I have green glitter. Okay, you know what I made them? I put this last bat on this one and I'm deciding which one it should go on this one. I think I'll put it on that one. Okay, I promise we are almost done on this hand, but I'm going to go back and just touch up a couple things that need maybe just a little bit more gel, like just some of these lines on this ghost. I feel like that one line was especially very distracting. There is a little bit too much unevenness for me around the edges, and I don't want anything to pop up either. So I'm just taking some clear, like, builder type gel. Not a top coat, but also not a base just you know gel i think the thumb is actually my favorite i can't wait to see how the face looks once it's all glowing they are a little bumpy i don't know how you would get these so so flat and also be able to get them off of the sheet i think next time i would consider encapsulating them with like acrylic or really doing like a thicker gel that is if i'm not doing them on like full cover tips because i feel like i don't know i on all of the edges even if it's laying down flat it's still thick and i don't even think i did these that thick so I'll definitely have to play around with different stuff like that and see what I can do to make it not seem so thick. And here we are. Again, a little more lumpy than I would like, but I love this ghost. I feel like it looks so good. I'm not sure if I would have been able to draw that on my own. Maybe, maybe not. Also love the face. I will definitely show you guys how it looks in the dark. And that is all. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys liked this spooky set. If you're watching this around when I post this video, then the template for subscribers Draw My Nails Halloween edition will be up and live. I will link that in my description box. And once again, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll hopefully see you next time. Bye!